there's a reason why people like Donald Trump. And it's because he bluntly says things that everyone else in the establishment is unwilling to say or just completely covers up. Case in point, his reaction to Colin Powell passing away. Here's what he had to say in a statement that he released. Wonderful to see Colin Powell who made big mistakes on Iraq and famously so called weapons of mass destruction be treated in death so beautifully by the fake news media. Okay, let's just stop right there. No, but like that's what everyone who actually pays attention to US foreign policy was thinking yesterday, right? Like everyone felt the need to maybe um, pad their critique with some pleasant commentary about him. But no, you look at his career, you look at what he did, you look at the fact that he lied. In, on an international stage, knowingly lied in regard to Iraq and weapons of mass destruction. That alone is bad enough. But then you look at other things from his past, which I'll get into in just a second. And it's just like, yeah, let's stop pretending like he was a perfect guide. He was super moral. Let's be honest about what his career and his legacy entailed. But let me continue. Hope that happens to me someday, Trump says. Honestly, I doubt it, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, he also says that Colin uh, Colin Powell was a classic rhino, Republican in name only, if even that. Uh, always being the first to attack other Republicans, he made plenty of mistakes. But anyway, may he rest in peace. So he ended it pleasantly, at least, right? <laughs> well, not really. But anyway, may he rest in peace. <laughs> I know, I was kidding. <laughs> um, but look, I. Whether you like or dislike Donald Trump, and I will admit, I obviously dislike Donald Trump quite a bit. This is what appeals to people in regard to like his personality, like the way that he talks about things and he does it bluntly without tiptoeing around obvious facts. Yeah, there's two different parts of it. One is that the elites are scandalized by plain talk, right? And they're scandalized by anyone who doesn't revere the professional class. And so Colin Powell was a shining example of the Washington professional class. And so it defends them personally if Colin Powell is ever insulted. John McCain was another example of that. Now they're both Republicans, both giant war hawks, and in Washington beloved. Not beloved in Iraq, not beloved in Afghanistan or Syria or in many other parts of the world, but in Washington among the elites. They love Colin Powell. Now, I mean, the, the second half of it, though. Can I just give you a quick example? I mean, Maggie Haberman, mm -hmm. a New York Times reporter, quote tweeted Trump's statement, and she was incensed, right? Like, oh, his, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of, oh, his mother, you know, never told him, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it, like that kind of thing. But no, are we gonna have a discussion about the former Secretary of State's legacy? Right? Or are we just gonna pretend like he was a perfect person who never did anything wrong? He took part in war crimes that led to the massacre, the murder, the death of hundreds of thousands, if not one million civilians in Iraq. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah, and so uh, Maggie Haberman is saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Well, then you might not be a reporter. I mean, that's yeah, not what real. reporters are supposed to do. But that is the unofficial rule that she lets slip through a, oh, mother said BS. You're a reporter for the New York Times. What do you mean if you have nothing to, nice to say, you shouldn't report anything? That's generally been the rule for corporate politicians and corporate media. If you can't kiss their ass, don't write it. Don't write it. Don't let anybody know Manchin takes five million, made $5 million profit from cold. That's for TYT, they're radicals. They actually do news and facts. And in this case, Colin Powell, I mean, look, he uh, he also authorized torture, disaster, let alone what he did that was horrific in the Reagan administration. So, uh, but on the other hand, Trump is is not a bright guy, we, so you have to c confess that. Like, you don't, I know it's that. not how you write it. Uh, and I know, Jenk, but like, do you understand how much that uh, that type of communication appeals to a huge portion of the country. I know what's so frustrating, honestly, is we do plain talk, and we don't. You don't have to be dumb to do plain talk. You could actually have a smart conversation, but you could say it in a way that people can understand it. And by the way, I don't think you're that smart if you talk in a way that no one can understand. Then obviously you're not getting it. You're not understanding how to reach people, right? So I'm not against that at all. But there's this again, this giant double standard by the media. If the right wing does plain talk, even in criticizing it, but they'll Amplify it, and they but 
Trump was always considered super legitimate. Remember in 2016, oh, come on, Jay. he got this no, he got over. This is where you lose me. This is where you lose me. But Anna, the media no, you're never totally wrong. took him seriously, with the exception of right wing media. No, okay, no, give me an no. example. No, hold on. There's a giant. They said they gave him over a billion dollars of free coverage in the primaries alone. Hold on, hold on. If a progressive ran, if Nina Turner ran as an example, right? Let alone Bernie Sanders, who was the most accomplished progressive in, in history. And back in 2015, he got zero coverage from the press. Nearly zero. Because they're afraid okay. of him and what he represents, James. That's my point. But that's not, my they point. Any afraid clown. Of Trump. They thought Trump was a clown, which is why they gave him so much free coverage. But they even thought if it was they, entertaining. They thought it was funny. Even if they thought that you had the biggest progressive clown in the world and they could rail on him, etc., they would do that for one second. I've seen it happen. And then they say, shh, 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 never cover the progressives. Never cover. Look, they, we just talked, did a story earlier in this show where progressives were allowed on CNN and everyone's like, whoa, what the hell's going on? Right? So, right wing lunatics can say anything they want and they get billions of dollars in free media coverage. Progressives can't break through. And so, it, it, this is what leads to the uneven playing field. That's why you, and in this case, in this story, that's why you almost never hear the downside of, of, the bureaucrats in Washington who've killed hundreds of thousands of civilians. And by the way, you're not gonna hear that from the right wing or Donald Trump. He's like, oh, I don't like him. He told people to vote against me. I don't like him. Did he ever talk about, hey, the death squads in Central America that Colin Powell was uh, helped to aid and abet? No, Did he talk about the hundreds of thousands of dead civilians that Trump and the right wing don't care about at all? But that never makes it into the goddamn press because they're obsessed with the right wing, right wing, right wing, corporate, corporate, corporate. Sorry, go. Okay, well, the New York Times uh, did write about Colin Powell's uh, role in covering up the My Lai uh, massacre, uh, mm -hmm. and that was right after his death. So uh, they do cover things like that. Uh, but again, look, I just want to go back. Never mention Jake. it again. Ugh. Never. You go ahead, turn on cable news. Right now. Turn down cable news, see if you'll see one unkind word about Colin Powell or the My Lai massacre. Never. This is the same thing that we did in earlier in the show. CNN shows you a poll where, not a poll, but a number where in West Virginia, only 3% of people work in coal. Well, so it's all a fiction. Then they go on and ask Manchin about that, the other senators about that. No, never, 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 never. You're right about that, but you're conflating a bunch of different things into like one talking point. Again, I just want to go back to Trump versus Bernie. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the difference? Do you understand that the message, the fundamental message coming from progressives like Bernie Sanders threatens their profits, threatens their profit motive? They don't want to popularize those ideas and those proposals. Whereas with Trump, I mean, TV executives were pretty brazen about it, they were pretty transparent about it. Trump brought in the ratings and they genuinely didn't think Trump had any possibility of winning. So they're like, win, win, we've got a sideshow, we've got a clown. Why don't we give this clown endless coverage? It helps our ratings, there's no chance he's gonna win. They weren't threatened by Trump, that was the issue. They didn't take him seriously. Anna, we're agreeing, we're, we're getting upset over nothing because <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. Except the only thing I'm layer on top of that, of course they're not, that's my whole point is that they're not covering progressives because it, it threatens their profits. And uh, and they're giant multi-billion dollar corporations. The only thing I'm layering on top of that is, we could get the biggest celebrity you've ever seen. And if they were a true progressive, all of a sudden, after the initial blast, the media would cover them less and less. So yeah, yeah, because that, their incentives are to cover them less and less. Progressives are a threat to their profit motive. Then we're agreeing 100%. Okay. And that's why the mainstream media sucks. Well, it's, it's run like a private business is supposed to be run. This is how private businesses are run. This is how it works. They're actually a public company. Yeah, they're do publicly they, and, traded, but you and, know what I do mean. They, I know I know what you're saying. Uh, do they go out and tell their audience, by the way, oh, by the way, we're a public corporation listed on the stock market. We have fiduciary responsibility to maximize profit. So from now on, you'll only hear right wing corporate talking points and we will cover up all progressives and make sure they do not get it on air because then you might actually believe them. In fact, you already do believe them. We cover that up too. We have poll after poll showing that two thirds of Americans agree with progressives, but we'll never ever air them because we're a for profit company and we're not manufacturing news, we're manufacturing consent. If they gave that disclaimer every time they went on television, I'm good with with it, then hey, truth in advertising, we're all good to go, right? But they never say that. Instead, they go, "Oh, we are objective journalists. I do declare, we are objective. Corporations are awesome. The status quo is the best." 
and progressives, they're radicals. And they should be outsiders have no credibility. They should not be allowed. So screw them and the horse that they and the corporate horse that they rode in on. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.